Our next reader is Nancy Penrose from Seattle, Washington. And Nancy is going to read her second prize winning excerpt from her inter intercultural essay, The Golden Onsen Bathing in Japan. Good afternoon. Many thanks to the organizers of this competition and this event, and in particular to Dara Masi, who is the sponsor and judge for the Intercultural Essay Prize. The piece I'll be reading from today grew out of a trip to Japan I made in 2010, and I'll be reading a series of excerpts. The water is dark a hot swirl of red and brown. I step in and my feet disappear as I feel for the edges of steps and sink down. Heat attacks my naked calves, thighs, buttocks, belly. My body shudders. I pause to equalize with the water, run my hands through the bath until pain becomes pleasure. Flattening my back against the tiled wall, I slowly slide down to my chin. I have bathed since I was a child, of course, but I have never bathed like this in the waters of a Japanese hot spring, an onsen, rich with iron and salt. I am in the town of Arima, set into the northern slope of Mount Roko above Kobe. Here, hot water is a ritual for the Japanese, an immersion into culture for the traveler. I am in the Kinsen, the golden waters that are born from deep within the earth, from molten rock, magma that released fluids as it cooled. These are the deep brines of Arima, rich with iron, the source of their reddish brown color like cloudy tea, like red smoke, like rust. The Kinsen are unlike any others in Japan, and they are twice as salty as the sea. I alternate immersion with lifting myself out onto the edge to cool. I emerge from the water for the last time, unable to absorb, tolerate more heat. As I cool, I towel off my glasses and put them on. I feel like I am viewing a woodblock print of women bathing, a yukioi from 17th century Japan. A woman rests against the side of the pool, black hair pulled back from her round face. Her body is hidden in the dark waters, and her head seems to float, disembodied on the surface. With my withdrawal from the pool, I sense that the picture returns to balance, purity perhaps. I am the only Caucasian in the baths. I was prepared for my body to be an object of curiosity, yet not once have I looked up to find eyes watching my tall frame with too much flesh, now glistening wet and splotched red. I am reminded this is a culture untainted by my own cultural heritage of embarrassment and taboos on public nakedness. I rise and go to the shower to rinse off the salt water of Arima. Not all bathers do. Some leave it on believing it is beneficial to the skin. I dry off with a towel and then I cringe, for all I have to put on are the sweaty, cold clothes I had left in the changing room. But even my dirty jeans and damp turtleneck cannot dim the glow of the baths. Thank you.